Hey guys, what's up, it's Iflin here, and welcome to the first ever episode of Everything You Need to Know About. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Excalibur, one of the free starter warframes that you get to choose when you start up the game, who otherwise can be obtained by farming as parts of the Amulus boss on Hades Pluto, or by using Conclave standing to purchase him from Teshin in the relay. Please keep in mind that everything that I say in this video is subject to change as Warframe is still in beta, so make sure that if you're watching this video after September of 2017 to do some research yourself on the Warframe wiki, which I'll have linked down in the video description. Excalibur is a very balanced frame. He is probably one of the best Warframe choices if you want a mixture between offensive and defensive gameplay because of his diverse ability kit and multiple builds. But before we talk about his builds, let's take a look at his stats at level 30. At level 30, Excalibur has 300 health, 300 shields, and 150 energy. Alongside that, he has 225 armor, a D polarity, and a V polarity with no polarity in his aura slot. Excalibur does have a prime version, however, it is no longer obtainable and never will be again in the future as it was part of a Finder's Pack that was released back in December of 2012. The Finder Pack came with three exclusive prime items, that being Excalibur Prime, the Scanner Prime, and the Leto Prime. This Founders Pack put anyone who purchased the highest tier package back by £166. There is almost no substantial differences between Excalibur and Excalibur Prime. Excalibur Prime's armor is increased to 250 from the base 225. He gets one extra V polarity and a V for his aura, and those are the only real differences. So in reality, the only major difference there is the 25 armor, as you could just add on those extra polarities to your normal Excalibur by using Forma. There is a third version of Excalibur known as Excalibur Umbra who has not yet been released however the community believes that he is scheduled to release in 2018 alongside the sacrifice update that was showed off at Tenocon 2017. Moving on to Excalibur's abilities at max rank the first of which is known as Slash Dash. This ability allows Excalibur to dash forward or between his enemies within 12 meters with his exalted blade damaging anything in his path for 250 damage. This damage is split between the three physical damage types, 15% of this damage is in impact damage, another 15% is in puncture damage, and the last 70% is in slash damage. The base damage of slash dash can be increased by power strength mods, your melee combo counter, and Excalibur's passive which is known as swordsmanship, which means that whenever Excalibur has a sword, a set of jewel swords, a Nakana, or a rapier equipped, he gets 10% extra melee damage and attack speed. The damage of Slash Dash can also be increased via the use of melee mods that you have equipped such as Pressure Point or Elemental Damage mods, however, melee augment mods will not affect the ability at all. The range of which Slash Dash allows the player to travel is affected by Power Range mods. And that's really all there is to talk about whenever it comes to Slash Dash, other than it's a really cool mobility ability as you can just use it to propel yourself forward and get free missions 10 times faster. Moving on to Excalibur's second ability, Radio Blind. This ability allows Excalibur to raise his sword and let out an intense flash of light blinding enemies within line of sight in a 25 meter radius for 15 seconds, also opening them up to finisher attacks. The duration of which enemies stay blinded for is increased via the use of Pyre Duration mods and the range of which Radio Blind covers is affected by Pyre Range mods. If you wanted to make a build around Excalibur's Radio Blind, it would be beneficial to make use of the augment for him known as Radiant Finish, which causes enemies who are affected by Radio Blind to take 300% more finisher damage. It may also be beneficial to use a dagger with the mod Covert Lethality equipped as this grants you 100% extra damage when the enemy is blind or unaware of your presence. Excalibur's third ability is known as Radio Javelin. This ability emits 12 javelins to seek out enemies in line of sight within 25 meters and deals up to 1000 damage which is equally split between the three physical damage types. The damage this ability deals is affected by Pyre Strength mods and the range of which the javelins seek out enemies is affected by Pyre Range mods. Last but not least we have Exalted Blade, Excalibur's ultimate or fourth ability. The ability allows Excalibur to wield an energy sword that shoots out energy on every swing. Different styles of attacks deal different amounts of damage with this ability. For example, normal attacks deal 250 base damage where wall attacks deal 1000. Slide attacks deal 535 base damage and aerial and slam attacks, they deal 500 base damage. It's kind of complicated and weird I know, but most of us will most likely just be spamming the base attack as we can do it really really fast. On a slight attack, you also do a miniature radial blind which will stun enemies up to 5 meters for a duration of 6 seconds. The waves that are emitted on every attack will deal the same amount of damage as the base damage listed earlier. These waves will disappear over time until they finally disappear at the 40 meter mark. 
Pyro Strength mods, melee mods, and Excalibur's passive will increase the damage dealt by Exalted Blade, similar to Slash Dash. Pyro Efficiency and Duration mods will slow down the amount of energy that Exalted Blade drains per second while active. If you want to make a build around Excalibur's Exalted Blade ability, I recommend using the Exalted Blade augment known as Chromatic Blade. This augment changes Exalted Blade from being a physical damage type weapon to an elemental damage type weapon, meaning that it deals zero impact, puncture, or slash damage, but will deal elemental damage based off your energy color. For example, white energy color will make you deal cold damage, blue electricity damage, orange fire damage, and green toxin damage. This augment also increases the status chance of Excalibur's Exalted Blade. Raising your power strength to 180% or above will make it so Exalted Blade has 100% status chance which will allow you to strip enemies armor or shield insanely fast depending on your elemental damage types. Now we are going to talk about the builds that I personally use for Excalibur. Please keep in mind that these are my builds and they suit my playstyle. I'm not claiming that these builds are the best builds under any circumstances. Feel free to mod however you like. First up, we have my Exalted Blade build without the Chromatic Blade Augment. This build focuses heavily on Pyre Strength, Pyre Duration, and Pyre Efficiency. We combine Transient Fortitude with Intensify and Pyre Drift to get an extra 100% Pyre Strength, which adds 250 extra damage to our Exalted Blade's basic attacks. Just because we are focusing on Exalted Blade in this build does not mean that it's a good idea to ignore all of our abilities. Transient Fortitude and Fleen Expertise have a negative impact on Pyre Duration, which affects the amount of time we can spend in Exalted Blade and the amount of time that enemies who are blinded by Radio Blind stay blind for. To counteract the negative impact that these mods have, we throw on Prime Continuity. If you don't have Prime Continuity, throw on the regular version, however the difference between Prime Continuity and regular Continuity is 25%, so it's worth getting your hands on Prime Continuity as soon as possible as it's used a lot on frames which have a Drain Over Time ability. We have Vitality on to increase our maximum health, Prime Flow to increase our maximum energy, Streamline Max Rank and Fleet Expertise one from the top to make it so that we have a 0.65 energy per second Drain on Exalted Blade, Putting Fleet and Expertise to the max rank in this case is not really worth it as it takes away an extra 10% ability duration in return for 0.03 less energy drain on Exalted Blade, which isn't really worth it. Last but not least, we have Stretch On in our final slot, which is just to increase the range of our Radio Blind ability. However, if you have Chromatic Blade, it's worth replacing Stretch with Chromatic Blade as we have already passed the 180% minimum needed to get 100% status chance on Exalted Blade. Next we're going to talk about the melee weapon mods that you can throw on to further increase the damage dealt by Exalted Blade. Remember to use either a sword, a set of dual swords, Nakana, or Rapier to get the 10% damage bonus from Excalibur's passive. We throw on Prime Pressure Point, or the regular version for a flat damage increase, Berserker and Organ Shatter for faster attack speeds on crits as well as higher damage numbers, our elemental combo which varies from faction to faction for the purpose of this video I combine Toxin and Electricity to give me corrosive damage as well as adding on a little bit of fire damage at the end. Topping the build off I have a Life Strike on so we can keep our health up while in Exalted Blade and a Violent Scourge just to squeeze a little bit more damage out of our Exalted Blade. A lot of mods on this build are interchangeable, such as the Berserker, it could be swapped out for Fury, Life Strike could be removed for another elemental damage mod, you could get rid of Organ Shatter for something different too, the melee build is pretty much all up to the player and what they want out of their Exalted Blade, this is just my personal build. If you really want to make the most out of Exalted Blade, I would recommend specking into the Shadow Step skill in the Naraman Focus Tree as it makes you invisible on critical melee damage. Last but not least, we're going to be talking about the Radiant Finish build. This build makes use of the Radiant Finish augment to make Radio Blind an insanely strong ability, especially in endgame content. The build focuses a lot on power range, duration and efficiency, so it covers a large majority of the map and lets the stun last for a long time, so you can wipe out every enemy in a room with a single cast. We have Overextended, Stretch and Cunning Drift for our Pyre range. Overextended has a negative effect towards Pyre Strength, but that does not matter at all in this build. We have Prime Continuity for our Duration, Streamline for our Efficiency, Vitality for Health, Prime Flow for more energy, and then we have our Augment taking up a slot, and finally Rage, which I only threw on because it was a mod that fit on the build and it was at least half useful. This build will allow Radio Blind to cover 62 and a half meters and keep the enemy stunned for 23 seconds. 
Don't forget that if you want to make the most of this build, run a dagger with the mod Covert Lethality on for an extra 100% damage on finisher attacks. And that's it for the first episode of everything you need to know about. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm just finishing writing the script at 4 in the morning here. And I'm trying to put as much effort into the series as possible to make them almost perfect. If you feel like I missed anything, make sure to let me know in the comment section below in a respectful manner. And maybe even try answering other people's questions down there too. If you want to get more involved in the community, make sure to follow me over on Twitter, at xiflin, or even join my Discord. The link is in the description below, as well as the link to my monthly 500 Platinum giveaway, courtesy of Digital Extremes. And other than that there, that is pretty much it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button below. Hit subscribe for more Warframe content. Don't forget to hit the little bell so you get notified whenever I upload another video. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.